This is the key to the uh, worksheet on solving rational equations. Now on this worksheet, um, make sure you read the directions carefully because you notice it says, make sure you are looking at the resource that indicates what the work should look like before working on these problems. So when you get this, this in Canvas, you'll notice that in the, in the Canvas site, when you get that worksheet in red, or bold face, it also indicates that. So whenever you see that, whenever it indicates that you need to make sure you look at the resource to see what the work should look like, that you do so, so you can get all your points. Because if it's not the way I want it to look, you're not going to get all your points. All right, so, so these are rational equations. So if you look at number one, now what makes this rational equation, first of all, you, you see fractions, right? 5, 6, x plus 5 divided by 3x minus 12. It just so happens that in these rational expressions, some of these denominators are variable expressions. And so, so what you want to do in these cases, and that is what that resource told you to do, is you want to clear those fractions, clear those denominators by multiplying both sides by the least common denominator. And so to find the least common denominator, first of all, we need to factor each of those variable expressions. And so if I look at this variable expression right here, 3x minus 12, I know I can factor this linear variable expression because the GCF here is 3. So I can factor out a 3, so I get 3 times x minus 4. You can always check yourself 3 times x and 3 times negative 4 gives you this linear factor um, back. And then over here, this linear factor, the GCF is 1, so I can't do anything else to it. And this is just a monomial, so I'm going to leave it as it is. And so now remember, when, when looking at the least common denominator, your least common denominator, remember it says the word least, so the smallest. So you want to find the, the, the uh, smallest least common denominator in which each of those factors that you see will go into that evenly. And you want to use the smallest. And so if I look at this, this coefficient here, 3, and then this 6, and over here I can think of this as 1 times x minus 4. So if I look at all these coefficients right here, 3, 6, and 1, the smallest number that 3, 6, and 1 go into is 6. So part of my least common denominator is going to be a 6. 3 goes into 6, 6 goes into 6, 1 goes into 6. Your least common denominator, this is not a 3, so don't put a 3 here because 6 does not go into 3 evenly. Okay, all right. Um, now, my next factor I see is an x minus 4. So my LCD has to include that as a factor. And when you write the least common denominator, you have to use a product. So don't put a comma between those factors. That's incorrect. Your least common denominator is a product of factors. And so um, 6, I already have it. 1 goes into 6. And then x minus 4, I already have it. So don't list it again. So in other words, don't list. Don't say your least common denominator is 6 times x minus 4 squared, because that's not the least. That's a common denominator. So just because you see 1 here, 1 here, doesn't mean you need two of them. Okay? So just think, x goes in x minus 4, and this x minus 4 goes in x minus 4. So x minus 4 goes in x minus 4, x minus 4 goes in x minus 4. If you were to use a common denominator, that would make solving this a lot more difficult for you. Use the least, so that way, it will make things much easier. Okay, so now what we're going to do next, and that's what you had to do here, okay, the directions, is now we're going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator. So I had to see this if you were to get all your points. So the next thing I had to see was this. Now on the right-hand side, there are two rational expressions, or two fractions, I'm going to put that in brackets, just like this. I get x plus 5 divided by 3. Now, leave, uh, leave it in factored form. You'll see in a little while that if leave it in factored form, it'll make things a lot easier for you. Plus 5 divided by 6 equal, and over here, 8 divided by x minus 4. All right, so since, since I had two rational expressions on this side, I'm going to put that in parentheses. And now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to multiply both sides by that least common denominator. So I had to see 6 times x minus 4, and then times 6 times x minus 4. And now you're going to distribute. So you see you have those two rational expressions that are being, being multiplied by that least common denominator. So that's that uh, distributive property. So I get 6 times x minus 4 times that first rational expression, x plus 5, divided by 3 times x minus 4. 
plus, and then the LCD, which is 6 times x minus 4 times 5 divided by 6 equal, and over here I get 8 divided by x minus 4 times the least common denominator. And now what you're going to do is reduce. Now remember, I said leave it in factor form, right? And the reason for that is because now you can see these x minus 4s divide out. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is 1. x minus 4 divided by x minus 4 is 1. So remember, the whole point of multiplying by the LCD is to get these denominators to be factors of 1. So you can clear those fractions. And then 3 goes into 3 one time, 3 goes into 6 two times. All right, so notice 1 times 1 is 1, so you have 1 as your denominator. Over here, same thing, 6 into 6 is 1, 6 into 6 is 1. Over here, the x minus 4s divide out. Make sure you put factors of 1s in their place. All right, that's important. And all you have left are ones in those denominators, and that's what you wanted. Okay, now we're going to rewrite this. So I have 2 times 1 times x plus 5. So remember, 2 times 1 is 2. And then um, each term in this numerator is going to be multiplied by 2. So the next thing you want to do is to write it as 2 times x plus 5. Plus, and then 6 times x minus 4 times 5. Now remember, I'm sorry, 1. That's a 1. Multiplication is commutative. So the order in which you multiply does not matter. So what I would do is say 1 times 5 is 5, and then multiply that by x minus 4. So 5 times x minus 4 equal, and over here, 8 times 6 times 1 is 48. All right, so now notice I went from a rational equation to a linear equation. Now one thing I forgot to do was talk about the restrictions, so let's go ahead and do that. So the restrictions. So remember, the restriction is is the value of the variable that makes the denominator 0. So if you look at x minus 4 right here, you know that, because remember, you can never divide by 0, right? So that's undefined, so that's going to be a restriction. So if you look at x minus 4, your question becomes, where is x minus 4 equal to 0? Well, x minus 4 is equal to 0, and x equals 4. So that's one of my restrictions, x is going to equal 4. Over here, in this denominator, that's a 6. There's no variable there. So that means that, that this denominator is never going to be 0. It's always going to be 6. So, so a, a numerical, uh, so a denominator that's just a number is not going to produce a restriction. But over here, I have two factors. I have 3 times x minus 4. And I want to see where is that equal to 0. Well, the factor 3, that is never going to be equal to 0. But this variable expression will give you a product that's 0. So the question is, where is x minus 4 equal to 0? Well, we already took care of that, didn't we? So x minus 4 is equal to 0 when x equals 4. So there's only one restriction, and that is 4. So if I do all this work, when I get right here, and I, I solve this, this equation, and I get x to be 4, which is a restriction, that makes, that makes this denominator 0 and this denominator 0, then I would have to say no solution. OK? All right, so let's go ahead and continue. So, so I'm at this linear equation now, and so I'm going to distribute twice. So 2 times x is 2x, 2 times 5 is 10, and then over here, 5 times x is 5x, and then 5 times a negative 4 is a negative 20, equal 48. Combining like terms, 2x and 5x is 7x, 10 and a negative 20 is a negative 10, equal 48. Adding 10 to both sides, Combining like terms, this is 0, because those are opposites. A negative 10 to the positive 10 add up to be 0. I get 7x to be 58. And now notice that I'm multiplying x by 7, so the coefficient is 7. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by 7. And 7 divided by 7 is 1. 1 times x is x. And so when, when I divide that, I get 58 over 7, which is reduced. Now if I want to write this as a mixed number, I can. As a mixed number, that is 8 and 2 sevenths. And then eight, uh, 58 sevenths or 8 and 2 sevenths is not this restriction. So that was number 1. Okay, that's all you do. Very simple process. Okay, number 2, we have this rational e equation, number 2. We have 7 divided by x plus 3 minus x plus 5 divided by x squared plus x minus 6 equal 4 divided by x minus 2. And just as before, I need to find the least common denominator. So I can multiply both sides by that least common denominator. Now, just, just a reminder, as, as we discussed, um, either in class or 
if you're taking this online in the in the videos that were provided to you when you get to this situation you have this linear factor and you have this linear factor and both of those both of those um, linear factors are prime you cannot factor it any further but you have this quadratic expression right here x squared plus x minus 6 and what you want to try and do is is factor this quadratic expression as a product of two linear factors well in our situation usually what's going to happen is that the linear factors that go in here are going to be these linear factors and so if you think about it well if you if I say that then you're going to say well I can factor this then as x plus 3 times x minus 2 Now that's not always going to be true but multiple times you want to try this first and so if you check it if you use the FOIL method first outer inner last x times x is x squared the outer x times negative 2 is a negative 2x the inner is a positive 3x and the last 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6 and when I combine like terms see these two terms here are linear terms so I can combine them I get x squared plus x minus 6 which is what I wanted alright so that means that I can factor this quadratic expression as a product of these two linear factors so that becomes x plus 3 times x minus 2 and so now I can easily find the least common denominators remember the least common denominator is product of each of those factors that you see so I have x plus 3 I have x plus 3 but I already have it on it again because that's no longer a least I have an x minus 2 I have an x minus 2 but I have it I already have it listed don't list it again it will not be the least so if you if you put x plus 3 squared and x minus 2 squared you're gonna make this so much difficult for yourself alright so always use the least and then the restrictions is pretty easy right so if you look at at your two factors here so just look at those two factors so if you think about your two factors my two factors are x plus 3 and then x minus 2 so those are my factors now remember in writing the least gonna rise a product but these are your factors so this is 0 when x is negative 3 and this is 0 when x is 2 so those are your two restrictions so x cannot equal negative 3 and x cannot equal 2 so if I do all this work and I get the answer to be one of these I'm gonna say no solution alright so now we're gonna do our work remember your work the required work and so so I have two fractions on the left side so I'm gonna put that in brackets just like this so I get 7 divided by x plus 3 minus x plus 5 divided by and remember put it in factored form it helps you x plus 3 times x minus 2 equal and then this fraction 4 divided by x minus 2 and now I'm going to multiply both sides by the least common denominator just like this x plus 3 x minus 2 and now I'm going to distribute so each of those fractions that's inside that bracket is going to be multiplied by that LCD so I get x plus 3 times x minus 2 times that first fraction that first rational expression minus and then the LCD x plus 3 times x minus 2 times x plus 5 divided by x plus 3 times x minus 2 equal now I'm running out of room so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce these factors now so x minus 2's divide out remember the whole purpose of multiplying by the LCD is to get ones in these denominators and so you're left with 4 times 1 is 1 and so I'm sorry 4 times 1 is 4 and 4 times x plus 3 okay now let's go ahead and reduce these so remember the whole purpose of multiplying by the LCD is to get ones in here so if you see an x plus 3 here you better see an x plus 3 here in the LCD over here you have an x plus 3 you have an x plus 2 in the LCD you have an x minus 2 you have an x minus 2 in the LCD make sure you put factors of 1 because remember x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 is 1 x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is 1 and now I have 1 times x minus 2 times 7 so remember multiplication is commutative the order in which you multiply does not matter so I can say 1 times 7 is 7 and then 7 times x minus 2 parentheses are important now be careful here it's a good idea because you're subtracting it's a good idea to say 1 times 1 is 1 and that has to be multiplied by x plus 5 put that in parentheses parentheses are important equal and then 4 times x plus 3 
And now notice I went from a rational equation to a linear equation. So now it's a little bit easier to, to deal with. So I'm going to use a distributive property in each of those cases here. So 7 times x is 7x. 7 times a negative 2 is negative 14. A negative 1 times x is a negative x. A negative 1 times 5 is a negative 5. Equal. And then 4x. And then what's that? 12? 4 times 3 is 12. All right. Combining like terms, I get 7x minus x is 6x. A negative 14 and a negative 5 is a negative 19 equal, and then 4x plus 12. All right, now to solve this linear equation, we're bringing all the variables one side, constants to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 4x. you got to say subtract 4x here. Either subtract 4x or subtract 6x from both sides, but you have to do it like this. 6x minus 4x is 2x minus 19 equal, this is 0. And the reason I say this is because some students will say 4x minus 4. Well, 4x minus 4, first of all, is not, those are not like terms. So, so if you, if you want to subtract 4x, you better say subtract 4x, right? Okay, so be careful. All right, and then adding 19 to both sides, and then combining like terms, this is 0. Negative 19 and positive 19 are opposite, so when you add them up, you get 0. So you get 2x equal, and then 12 and 19 is 31. And then the coefficient of x is 2, so the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide both sides by that coefficient. When I reduce, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 times x is x, so I get x to be 31 halves, which is reduced. But I can write as a mixed number. If I want to write, write it as a mixed number, I'm going to say 15 and 1 half. All right? And so that is the key to um, this, these two uh, rational equation problems. So let me just kind of quickly indicate. So the LCD here was 6 times x minus 4. Our restriction was 4. So I'm going to say C next page for work. And over here, the LCD was x plus 3, x minus 2, and the restrictions were negative 3 and 2. And then C next page for work. Okay? All right. So that is it. That is the key to um, those two rational equation uh, um, problems.